Hey everybody, John Brown here again, uh, Gilgalad9 on Board Game Geek, Stormageddon42 on YouTube, and I had the special treat, at least for myself, I don't know if you're interested or not, but Dice Masters finally came. After pre-ordering it many months ago, it finally came. Um, I actually have two copies of the base set, so I can play multiplayer, well, more than two. Um, I, it's not officially in the rules, but you can find ways to do it if you want to. Um, I haven't had a chance to do it yet, but I have had a chance to play a total of four games, uh, with the regular two-player setup. Uh, if you haven't heard about Dice Masters for some reason, it's very similar to another game, Warriors, where you're using dice to purchase more dice, and similar to other deck-building games out there. Um, but here you're getting dice, and it's a dice-building game. This game is quite a bit different than Warriors, though, where instead of getting glory points, you're actually attacking your opponent, and instead of having made up heroes that like the letter Q, you're using superheroes and villains and whatnot. So let's take a look at how the game plays and what I think about it. Alright, so here I have a setup for one player ready to go. Um, this I just printed out online on regular paper. I probably want to print it out on some cardstock or something to do, or get a nice one eventually. I have eight apprentice dice that start out, and I have my team. I have eight different heroes or potentially villains. I do have two villains in this group a total of 20 dice on those cards, and then two uh, basic action dice that I chose. My opponent is going to have the same thing. They're also going to have two basic action dice and their heroes. Now anyone can buy basic action dice, however, only you can buy from your heroes. Now to start the game, uh, we don't actually have to use this bag to start the game, because all we have are these dice. So we're going to start with four apprentice dice, but later on in the game, after the first two rounds, we're going to want to use this bag to put all of our dice in after they're all used up and draw out of them. Similar to Quarriers or for deck building game, basically reshuffling your cards. So I will roll my four apprentice dice and see what I get. Well on these dice there are different types of energy. So there's shield energy, fist energy, bolt energy, mask energy, and a question mark which can be used as any type of energy. And there also is the actual apprentice. So if you've played Quarriers you probably know this guy costs zero to field. He has one attack and one defense. So if I had rolled this, I could use these, or something different in quarters, I can re-roll any dice that I want one time. So I could hypothetically do that, and let's say I want to re-roll these two, and then I have to keep what I get, obviously. So if I wanted to, I could have three apprentices that would come out into the fielded zone, and I don't have to pay any cost to bring them out. Now, I could attack with all three of those, and if this was the first turn of the game, I'd basically do three damage. And then they would go into the use pile because they hit the enemy. Now, it gets a little bit more complicated, obviously, when the enemy can defend and whatnot. So, for now, let's pretend we got a bunch of energy. Now, with energy, I can buy as many cards as I want. So, if I could afford to get two beast cards, then that would be kind of cool. Now, if we take a look at a card, a card is going to show us how much energy it costs, so this costs two total energy, but one of the energy has to be a mask. So I actually could not buy two beasts because I only have one mask. Now if one of these fists were, say, another mask or a question mark, then I could use this mask and this energy, and then this question mark is a mask and this energy, to be able to buy two beasts. So you can buy as many as you can on a turn. Or I could potentially buy, you know, a four cost, three cost, or even um, some of my basic actions up there, depending on what I can afford. And those don't take any special kind of energy. So it shows us the special abilities, so when beast blocks, you draw a die and place it into your prep area, which we'll get to in a moment how that works. And if you have the asterisk on your card, then you get the special ability to draw two and pick which one you want to put in there. So, and then it'll show us, basically all the heroes or villains work the same. It's going to be a side that gives you one energy, two sides give you two, so a little bit better than the regular dice as far as getting energy, and then three different levels of heroes. They're not always going to cost one, two, and three, but basically they're going to get more powerful attack and defense as you go up in levels, and if the asterisk is showing on some cards, some cards don't have it, then you'll get a special ability for that die. Now let's say we're a few turns lighter into the game, and I've got these dice still in my fielding zone. I don't have to attack with dice if I don't want to. They can just stay in my fielding zone. And this is what I have. And you might say, well, hey, I've got more than four dice down here. Well, we'll get to how that can happen here. Maybe I have this special action that allows me to do two damage to a character or my opponent. 
So I could hit my opponent for two with it, or I could hit one of their characters for two with it. Let's say they had, you know, one of their apprentice guys out there blocking, potentially. So this little 1-1 one, one could potentially block, say, my potential five damage Captain America, who's a 5-4. So I could get rid of that guy by using that die, and then I could decide to go in and attack. Now I also, now this Punisher takes one energy to field, so I could pay one to field him, and let's say he had no blocker site, if I wanted to attack with both of those guys, since he does five damage and he does four damage, that would give me nine total damage I could go in and attack with. And maybe I'll buy something with these two dice. Now the thing is, let's say my opponent had blockers. Let's say he had another 1-1 one, one apprentice out there, and he blocked my 4-1 Punisher. Well, Punisher would take one damage, you would do four damage to the apprentice. I would knock out the apprentice, and the apprentice would knock out my Punisher because, well, he only has one health. So anyone who's KO'd goes into the prep area. And maybe had another small blocker out that would, you know, stopped my Captain America but didn't deal four damage to him. Well, if he wasn't able to knock out my Captain America, then he would go back into my field zone. So basically, three things can happen when you attack. If your attack gets through, you go into the use pile. Then after I've used all my dice, I'll eventually put them into my bag and pull them out again. So this is in some ways kind of, you know, it's nice to do damage, but you might not get that die again for a while. You can hit somebody and they block it, but not knock your guy out, in which case you just go back into the field zone, or you can get knocked out, so you go into the prep area. So at the end of my turn, everything I've used will go away, and on my next turn, I'll draw four dice from the bag, but I'll also take any dice in my prep area and roll them as well. So that's how you potentially get more dice out onto the field, along with some characters and dice abilities that allow you to get more dice out also. There are a lot of different cards in the game, so this is the team that I use for a few of my games, and one of the abilities I liked quite a bit is like this Green Goblin. So while he's active, every one of my sidekicks becomes a 2-2 instead of a 1-1. So as long as he's sitting in my field zone, then I have that ability. And I don't have to attack with him, and I don't have to block with him if I don't want. So I can potentially have him sit there and just buff up my little apprentice guys. So Storm has some cool abilities, makes my opponent re-roll their characters, and if they don't get a character, then the character basically goes away. Pretty awesome ability. Venom makes all characters who aren't fist symbols of my opponent get minus two, minus two. And then potentially my fist characters can get plus one, plus one if I have either of these two asterisk sides out. So Captain America knocks out my opponent's, my opponent's apprentice dice that he potentially is using to chump block. So as you can see, there's actually quite a bit more strategy in this than just, you know, sending my guys on a quest to potentially get points, in that I have to decide when to leave guys to sit back and block, when to leave guys there to potentially use their abilities, and when to go ahead and attack, because by attacking, I potentially leave myself vulnerable. So, for example, if I had a bunch of guys in my field zone and attacked, and my opponent had a bunch of blockers, maybe I knock out a bunch of their guys and maybe some of my guys get through or whatever, but then potentially my opponent gets to hit back hard the next turn, not only with the dice that he brings out, but potentially any one that he KO'd, and, or that was KO'd, that he can roll again as a character. And because you get to re-roll, and you have a 50-50 chance of getting a character, you're going to get your characters a lot more often than you would in Warriors. One thing to bear in mind, this is a collectible game. The starter set comes with a pretty decent number of cards and two dice for each of the heroes that it comes with, and then each card also shows you what's the maximum number of dice you can bring for that hero. But for example, here's two different Professor X's. They have different fielding costs and different abilities. It's the same dice for the cards, so no matter which Professor X you decide to use, you know, if you get dice for Professor X, you can use it, which with any card you have, you just can't have two Professor X's on your team, basically. And as this is a collectible game, there is rarities. This gray bar right here basically means it is a uh, common card. This green bar means it's an uncommon card. And this gold bar means it is a rare card. I would show you that the super rares have a red bar, but I do not have any super rares, so I am not able to show you that. Now, if you're just learning the game, or you don't have a bunch of cards yet, maybe you just have one starter set and play or playing two players and can't really field eight guys with 20 dice, there, there are ways you can play with less cards, less dice, and also less starting health. But in the, the main tournament game, uh, this is the setup you'll have when you'll start with 20 life, and obviously the first one to take their opponent down to zero wins. These bags are bad. The fact that it doesn't, it, they're functional, you can use them. I've used them so far. I may pick up some nice cloth dice bags, but they work, but they're not good. 
Um, the fact that it doesn't even come with like glossy paper fold out play mats is annoying. I mean, you can go to the Board Game Geek and print them out on whatever you want, so it's not that big of a deal, but it's kind of annoying. Um, when you buy booster packs, uh, the cards are bent. Um, that's annoying. The whole collectible aspect could be potentially annoying. But a dollar for two cards and two dice? Not bad, really. Um, so that could be something that is a negative, but maybe isn't. I mean, there is still something fun about, you know, ripping open, open packs. If you're willing to spend the money on it, go watch the, uh, <laughs> the Board with Life skit on Dice Masters if you haven't seen that yet. So there are some things I definitely don't like about the components, not having to play mad, the, the bent cards with the boosters, the, uh, the collectibles hit or miss, potentially, um, and if you want to get together a team, you're probably going to spend more money than you want to, because you have to, maybe you have a bunch of dice, but not the card you want, maybe you have the card you want, but you don't have enough dice for that character, it's like, oh, I got this great card, I, I love that Venom card, but I've only got one die for it. They're going to try to get you to spend money, and if you like the game, you probably will. However, despite those negatives, I like the game quite a bit. Um, I really got into board gaming as my main hobby um, shortly after Dominion was, was really big and the deck building craze was going on, and then Warriors came out and said, we're going to do dice building. And I loved the concept of it. I liked the concept better than deck building at, at the time, I thought, but I didn't particularly love the game. I liked it. I liked it a lot, but I didn't purchase it. I didn't pull the trigger on that because I felt like there was something missing. Uh, Marvel Dice Masters adds what I thought was missing. Um, it's not even the theme that made me pull the trigger on this. Um, my nerd foo is strong when it comes to fantasy, sci-fi, and, and board gaming, but one of my weaker genres when it comes to my nerddom is the comic book superhero stuff. I like it, but it's not my main thing. So um, that wasn't really what drew me in. What drew me into this game was the added strategy. There's quite a bit of thinking that goes into the, you know, do I want to attack all out? Do I want to attack with a little bit, hang back? What do I want to leave in defense? What guys do I want to leave in my fielding zone? And what guys do I want to bring to the fight? Um, that sort of, um, you know, deck building before you play, like the Magic Gathering, what deck am I going to bring, that sort of thing. That idea of bringing these guys to the fight and having access to them as long as I get the energy to pay for them, um, it's a lot lighter than Magic as far as that goes. You're only bringing eight guys and two special actions, but... I like that element of it. I like, this is my team. I can build a thematic team if I buy enough booster packs to get the guys I want for my thematic team. Uh, so, that's it. Um, if you're a big fan of Quarriers, maybe you won't like what this added. I can't say that everybody's going to love this game. I mean, that's something you can't really say about anything. But for me, it added just the right things. Um, it is designed to be just a two-player game, which is potentially a turn off for some people, but, you, I mean, you can play it with more. You can play it where you attack the person on the left, um, you can play Two Headed Giant, you can play all those other Magic the Gathering variants if you want to, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, they're, they're, it's not hard to find, you know, what basically the rule sets would be different for that. I'm surprised they didn't include even that, some of those variants in the rule book, kind of like uh, I, a small deck builder I love called Star Realms, you should check out my review for that, um, that has the, hey, if you have two of the base sets, then, you know, here's other stuff you can do with it. So, overall, Dice Masters adds what I wanted in Quarters. More strategy, more... Um, I, I don't even know if it's a PvP element that I like, but just that, that idea of more interesting decisions every turn. So, Dice Masters will be getting some of my money. I, I'm not as much looking forward to D&D and the other expansions that are out there, and it's frustrating that you announce all of these things before you even fill your pre-orders of the original game. But... Despite the issues I have with it, I definitely think that Dice Masters is a solid game. So there you have it. Dice Masters offers quite a bit in the base game. Not enough probably to keep you interested for a long time, especially uh, if you're only using one base set and sharing it. But there, there's a lot of potential for it, and um, even though the collectible model is probably going to be a money sink, and... Uh, Sure, that can be frustrating, but the the game is solid, and I think even with not a ton of booster packs that, you know, you can put together some cool teams and have some fun with it. So maybe if you, you know, like Quarters the way it is, don't like the, how it's changed, don't like the PvP, don't like the two-player focus, you may not like it, but if you're looking for something like Quarters with more strategy, more interesting decisions, and the fun of bringing my team and pitting it against your team or potentially other players' teams, then it's something I very highly recommend. So, overall, Marvel, Avengers vs. X-Men, Dice Masters, 
I'd have to say you're worth the wait, and that's pretty high praise.